Sean Money, Money Outdoor Adventures. Well, it's uh, first week of August. I'll be uh, leaving about four weeks, headed to uh, Colorado on my first uh, bow hunting trip of the year. I need to get some broadhead sharpened. So I'm gonna show you how I sharpen them. Now, I have a Grizzly knife buffer slash grinder that I've had for a number of years. I actually bought it used off of a man and uh, it makes sharpening things so much easier. And I understand a lot of guys don't have a big belt sander slash buffer like this. Uh, but if you do, then it works out tremendous. And, and uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it on this. I sharpen my knives on this thing. I, I sharpen everything on it. Now, the critical thing is this. This belt that's on here uh, was originally a uh, let's see, a 220 grit, but it's just wore out. I mean, there's just relatively no grit left on it. And so that's what I use, because you can take away so much material if you're not careful on a big belt sander like this. These are 175 grain, single bevel, grizzly broadheads that I'm gonna be sharpening. I've got a set of arrows tuned with 175 grain broadheads. I'm gonna take these, uh, but I'm also this week going to uh, tune up a set of arrows for 200 grain broadhead. I've got some components coming in. I'll make a video on that later on when that stuff comes in this coming week and show you how I bear shaft tune and go through that whole process. But right now we're gonna, we're gonna sharpen up these single bevels and then I also have some double, double bevels over there and I'll show you how I do that. We're gonna hit it first on this wore out belt that was originally a 220 grit. Then we're going to go over here to the uh, to the buffing wheel and uh, put the finishing touch on them. And so uh, let me show you. I, I always cut a little piece of a shaft to have something to hold on to when I'm sharpening. Uh, it just makes it so much easier. The most important thing on sharpening anything, and I know that you know this because there's a thousand videos out there, but the most important thing is to keep that bevel angle the same, whether it's a single bevel or a double bevel. Okay, so on this particular one, you know, that's the angle, and I'm going to just freehand it, and I'll just bring it across. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it until there is a little burr on the back side here before I take it over to the uh, center. I also have some water. The last thing we want to do is heat this blade up and take the tension out of the blade. And so uh, I will hit it a couple of times, and then I'll dunk it in this water. Now, it's not going to... It's not going to take the hardness out of the blade because I'm not ever going to let it get hot enough to do that, okay? That's why I've got it here because you're, you're putting a lot of friction on the blade. So here we go. Of course, them sparks mean we're removing material off. I'm just going to go a couple of passes on each side. I'm going to dunk it in the water. Do a couple of more. I can already see a little bit of a... Uh, yeah, that's got a... That one side's already got a... Uh, a burr on it. This side does too. These are new, so therefore they're not, you know, they're not uh, terribly dull. Let me see. I've turned the sander off. I want to say something before I get over there on that buffet wheel. I've got a little bit of a burr on, on each of these. And, uh, which tells me that they're sharp. That, that buffet wheel is extremely, extremely dangerous. I cannot emphasize how dangerous a buffing wheel is. If you just get on the internet and you do a little bit of research, you'll see some of the most gruesome wounds from guys working with knives and other implements on a buffing wheel because they'll catch that buffing wheel and it'll throw that razor sharp blade into them. So when we're working on the buffing wheel, we always work from the center of the wheel down to the bottom half of the wheel so if it catches it'll throw it in if you're working up here it'll throw it into your body if you're working on the upper half so about the center is usually where i work but never up here never up here um 
I just wanted to say that before we get on that. And, and here's the thing. If you're, if you're working on sharpening on a power tool, so on a sander buffer, you don't need to be distracted by anything else. You don't need kids running around your feet. You don't need dogs barking. You don't need neighbors sitting there trying to talk to you. It is really a dangerous thing. So, you know, give it your undivided attention. Okay, now we're going to go to the buffing wheel. We're going to buff, buff this broadhead out and see if it, see if it won't be razor sharp. And at my age, I have to have readers on. I can't see at 53 like I did when I was 33. Put some buffing compound on the buffing wheel. I'm going to start on the bevel side. And I'm just going to run it across there a couple of times, about three or four times. I'm going to flip her over and do the next side the same way. Put moderate pressure on it, not a lot of pressure. We'll do it a couple more times on each side, on each bevel that is. Now I'm going to flip it around, use my left hand, and this is the back side which will have the burr on it. I'm going to come across it a couple of times. Then I'm going to come back to this bevel side and I'm going to lighten the pressure up and I'm going to come across it once, across it once. I'm going to come to this back side and go the same thing, one, with light pressure. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see. Look at that, just, just peeling that hair right off there. you got to be careful when you're doing that after you get them this sharp. I mean, that's just shaving sharp, okay? This grizzly knife buffer grinder is a tool used for making knives. I took a little knife making school, made a, made a couple of knives back several years ago and haven't really made any sense, but I picked this thing up, used, and I use it all the time for sharpening stuff. It just moves at 1,725 RPMs, which is perfect for buffing and sanding. Now, if you just get a bench grinder, which I have one over there and it's got a paper wheel on it, you know, those things are running 3,000 RPM or something. Um, this slower RPM gives you a little more control and you don't eat up material, especially on the sanding side, like you would on a higher RPM. Okay, I'm gonna sharpen uh, the rest of these single bevels, um, and then I'll uh, move on to a double bevel and uh, show you basically the same thing, just gonna do it uh, on both sides, all right? All right, I've sharpened up a half dozen of those uh, single bevel 175 grains. I've got a dozen 200 grains, but I'm gonna wait till I get them matched to arrows, and then I'll uh, I'll tune them up. I'll sharpen them up next week. This is a uh, Zwicky Cliff, 175 grain, same weight as those single bevels. I actually carried these this spring turkey hunt, and I killed three hogs with these broadheads. This particular one right here killed a hog. We're going to sharpen it back up, and I think I've got three more, so I've got four of these over here. I think one. Yeah, there's four of these. And uh, I'm going to sharpen these back up. Now, it's a double bevel, so each side of the broad head is sharp and not like the single. I uh, am going to show you something here that will help you. Again, i got to put these on when I'm working on stuff. So let me, let me turn the camera over here on the, on the sander. People always want to know, how do you keep the bevel right? Well, your thumb's the guide. And that's whether you're sharpening this broad head or you're sharpening a knife. Grab a hold of the handle of the knife, or in this case, the... The, the piece of arrow shaft. Put your thumb right on top of it, and when I set that down on that belt, I'm gonna keep it at that angle coming across, and I'm just gonna let my thumb be the guide, okay? And then I'm gonna do this side the same way. Then when I come over here, I'm gonna grab that the same exact way with my left hand, and I'm gonna come across. Now, I'm gonna have this broad head sweeps a little bit back, so I've gotta follow the contour of it. Okay, let's see if we can't get one sharp here. In, just coming right across. I'm not putting a tremendous amount of pressure on it. Remember, I got water over here. I'm dipping it in. I don't want to take the temper out of my 
out of my steel. Again, I'm going to just come back a couple more times. This broadhead is extremely dull. It went through a hog. Now I'm going to turn it over here to this left hand. I'm going to hold it the same way with my left hand, thumb indexing it on top. And I'm just going to bring it right across just like I did with my right hand. Creating the same bevel as I put with my right hand. Spin it over. And let it off in the water. Now, there's no difference between what I'm looking for on a double bevel and a single bevel. I'm looking for a burr. That burr will always be on the back side of the last time you sharpened it there. We're going to give it some more because this is very dull. And once you do this a little bit, if you've got good light, you actually can see the burr develop with your eye. I'm going to do it just one side at a time now. Okay, pull it off. Now I'm going to go over this other side. Again, this is an old wore out 220 grit belt. It's, it is absolutely wore out, which is what we want. I can see a little bit of a burr on there. Yeah, it's got a burr, but I'm gonna go ahead because it looks like the burr's not all, it's just, it's, it's not, the burr is not consistent from one end to the other. There's a couple little spots that it does not have a burr. So we're going to hit it a couple more times. Go ahead and hit it on this side. That's got a burr. It looks like the full length of it. So does that. Okay, now I'm going to move over here. Buffing wheel. Put me some buffing compound on there. Now this on this one, no different. I'm just going to come across moderate pressure. One, two, three. I'm just going to flip it over and do this side. One, two, three. Now I'm going to go to my left hand. Same thing as over there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I'm just going to come back very lightly. One, 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 one. That broadhead is razor sharp as well. I mean, it just, it'll just peel the, I mean, it's just like a razor blade. Now, what I'm going to do after I get all these sharpened, is I'm gonna go in the house, I'm gonna take petroleum jelly, okay? Just regular old petroleum jelly, and I'm just gonna coat that edge with that petroleum jelly. I'll coat the whole thing, actually. That'll just stop that blade from rusting any, okay? Just keep that edge good and sharp. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sharpen one more with you watching, and then I'll finish up them other two without you watching. This is gonna just be in real time, I'm just going to fire it up, I'm going to sharpen it, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to sand it on the sander, I'm going to buff it on the buffer, and get it sharp, okay, real time, so you can see exactly how long it takes with this kind of machinery. Here we go, we're just coming across. Go to this left hand side now. Pull 
it off in the water. Water. Yeah, I can see a bird on both sides. bear on both sides and we'll hit this with some rubbing compound. Razor blade. Absolutely like a razor blade. So again, I'll uh, I'll coat these in petroleum jelly when I get them in the house, and uh, then I'll store them and they'll be ready to go. I'm gonna finish sharpening these up. Hey, listen, I appreciate you watching the channel. Appreciate all of you that subscribe to the channel. I know you could be watching a whole lot of stuff. It means a great deal to me that you are tuning into Money Outdoor Adventures. If you hadn't subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe and like and listen in the next three or four months. We're going to have all kinds of cool hunts on there. Hey, have a good day.